We're here to answer your game gaming or game night questions, working with you to make your game night better. Tonight's question comes from Daniel S., who writes, I need a suggestion for a gift for a couple who like board games and Douglas Adams, but okay. who already have many of the obvious ones. Any good ideas? Well, thanks for the great question, Daniel. Um, now, when I hear Douglas Adams, the first thing I think of is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That was the main thing I read from Adams, and I read it cover to cover and devoured it all. Then I think of Dirk Gently, uh, which has some sci-fi elements with the time travel and stuff like that. And, while well, the fact that he worked on a number of classic Doctor Who episodes, which I'm now discovering because I've been watching classic Doctor Who and seeing Adam's name pop up fairly regularly. Now, this all points me, looking at those three licenses, to silly, ridiculous, funny sci-fi games. So those are the type of games we're going to focus on tonight. And while I've been a huge Adams fan for many years, since I started on the guide back in grade school, <laughs> and now I believe I have three different versions, including the radio script. Yeah, that's impressive. My first experience was actually the TV show on the BBC. I remember that one and the, the ship and the probability drive disappearing and everything. I didn't actually read the books until university, uh, particularly in Professor Gold's math class, if I remember correctly, <laughs> which probably wasn't the best thing. Now, the other part of Daniel's question calls out that they are looking for a gift for a couple. So this also means games that are good for two players. Now, uh, silly and two player in sci-fi, I think it's going to be a little too limited for our game list tonight. So instead of limiting it to two player games and games good with two, I think instead we're just going to call out how each game recommendation would play with two. That way our list is more useful for a wired range of game groups while still answering the question. Now, before we get to Mo's list, I do want to know that oddly, there isn't a single actual licensed game out there based on the Hitchhiker's Guide, at least in board game form. Yeah. Really, except for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text-based adventure that some of us grew up with, mm -hmm. uh, arguably the Starship Titanic, also from Adam's, and a fan-made card game whose print-and-play files were lost when Angel Fire shut down. <laughs> there aren't any official games based on Hitchhikers. Which is just weird to me. Like, like how? How is there no Hitchhiker's Guide game? Like, there, it just seems ripe for party games or a silly sci-fi game. Or There's no role-playing games either. Like, there's just none. I would expect at least there was a TV show. Why was there not a BBC board game with you know, roll to move six and I move forward prefix six spaces on the board and then I draw a random card. Well, Adams was a huge computer fan. He yeah. was a computer geek. And a lot of the actual uh, discussions of uh, sort of how um, uh, how people interacted with computers in uh, Hitchhikers were born from his own fascination yeah. with computers. And that's where we got the text adventure and the reason why Starship Titanic didn't actually really come out for the most people until 2015 because mm -hmm. the actual conversation engine he was designing was simply too complex. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's not to say there are no games actually based on Adam's work, though. There is right. a party game in the Everything is Connected series based on BBC America's Dirk Gently, the TV series. This is a card driven storytelling pitch game where the holistic detective tears, tells their solution to a mystery, then the police detective tells their story, and the other players vote on whose story is better. The roles then shift around the table. So there you have it, I guess. Our, our first game suggestion would be an actual Douglas Adams-based game, would be Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, Everything's Connected, published by IDW Games. Though I should point out that that TV show is well post uh, Douglas's death. and yes. Lo loosely connected with uh, <laughs> with the official Dirk, Gent Dirk Gently writings. But since that's all we have for official licensed games, what silly sci-fi sci games do you think Douglas Adams fans should check out? All right, so the first game that came to mind to me when I was thinking about this topic was Galaxy Truck. Now, this is a real-time tile-laying game where you're a trucker shipping sanitary pipes across the galaxy. Yes, you're shipping sewage pipes. In order to save money, the company you work for came up with a brilliant idea to make it ships out of said pipes. And I've got to say, that theme could totally come out of a Douglas Adams book. Now, actual gameplay involves players building their ships real-time out of tiles, then launching them on a journey, dealing with all kinds of hazards and hoping they arrive at their destination 
at least somewhat intact, and maybe with a little bit of bonus cargo to pick up some money along the way. Now, I've been a fan of this game since it first came out, and it was recently re-released in a new updated edition with, catch this, a cheaper price point. What about two players? Does the Galaxy Trucker work with two? Well, since there isn't a lot of player interaction, other than the fact that you're drawing from the same pool of tiles, and you can draft tiles your opponents choose not to take, I've found Galaxy Trucker plays pretty much the same, no matter how much the player count is. Yes, there's a bit more competition for harder to find parts, and when you reach your planets, you're generally going to get better stuff with only two players, but I don't think you need more than two players to have fun playing Galaxy Trucker. And that was Galaxy Trucker. That's from CGE. I forgot to toss in the uh, the publisher there. I think I did that for the rest of these. So we'll try to correct that if we miss them. Now, the next game that came to mind for me was Star Flux. Well, actually, it was just Flux. And I went, there's got to be a sci-fi version. So I looked up the various versions of Flux. And while I'm not a huge fan of this game myself, but they're, they're to me, they're too silly and too random. It's kind of like playing the infinite probability drive in a card game. Uh, but I get it. Groups love Flux. I know many gaming groups that love Flux. They, most of them also love imbibing alcoholic beverages at the same time. But it's cheap price point and accessibility. This could be a perfect gift for even non-gamers. Flux is one of those super simple card games. If you don't know it, the game starts with two rules. All it tells you is you draw one card, then you play one card, and that's it. Now, the fun comes from changing those rules with new rule cards. Now, that's how Flux was introduced to me, but I think the big thing that sells it is that once you start playing, you realize it's actually about managing to have the right keeper cards in play, matching a goal card in your hand. I wish someone had explained it that way to me because I was just so lost the first game changing rules for no reason. Knowing what the end goal is does really help. Now, as mentioned, there are tons of versions of Flux out there, though again, no official Douglas Adams based ones. Now, I recommended Star Flux because it's generic sci-fi, but if you prefer a specific license, there's Star Trek, Star Wars, and Firefly. Plus, there's even educational ver editions like Astronomy Flux. And well, Firefly uh, Flux could certainly, uh, uh, you know, settle in with some of the comedy of sci-fi yes. aspects. Now, two players, what about that? Well, for a game basically designed for big groups up to six, I actually find Flux plays better at lower player counts and can be quite cutthroat with only two. My only complaint, though, is without more players taking turns, the randomness of the deck can come into play more. And it's very common for someone to win just based on a lucky draw. But that's all part of playing Flux. And that was Star Flux from Looney Labs. Now, sticking with light, silly card games, my next recommendation is Star Munchkin. This is the sci-fi version of Steve Jackson's classic card game, where you're trying to get your character to level 10 by kicking down a door, fighting some monsters, and stealing their loot. Early in the game, players need to work together in order to overcome tougher foes. But once anyone starts getting close to level 10, the gameplay shifts and becomes all about backstabbing your previous allies and preventing them from getting to the top. Of all the Munchkin games, this is actually one of my favorites. I love the card combos and races in the game, and particularly love the laser phaser dazer system, as I like to call it. There's a system where you can actually combine weapon cards and just keep stacking them on top of each other. While the take that nature of this game won't be for everyone, there's a lot of people out there that love the Munchkin series of games. So now will this work for a geeky couple? Unfortunately, no. This is where Munchkin falls flat. It does require three players to play. And yes, there are some house rules out there for playing with two, but honestly, they're not great. In this particular case, you need at least three players and would be better off with four. Sorry, Daniel. And that was Star Munchkin from Steve Jackson Games. Next up, I've got Junk Orbit. Now, the premise here is that one planet's trash is another planet's treasure. Here you're playing a scavenger who goes around picking up space junk and delivering it to, well, anywhere that will take it. Now, the most fun bit here is the same junk that you're picking up and delivering is also what gets your ship moving by ejecting it out the airlock in the opposite direction that you want to move. Cute theme, cute art, and a very well-done movement system. To me, this, again, sounds like something out of a Douglas Adams book. But does it play well with only two players? I'm so glad you asked, Sean. <laughs> I would say yes. Actually, it plays great with two. Uh, Deanna and I have played this together both um, a few times, and we both had a lot of fun. 
That said, the game is better with more players. Great with two, but better with more all the way up to five. With the sweet spot being three if you ask Board Game Geek users. And that was Junk Orbit from Renegade Game Studios. So next up, I've got an area majority game. So before you even have to ask, it does not work well with only two players. It's area majority. You really need three players for any majority game to really work. Now, this game is Mission Red Planet. It's an anachronistic game set in a Victorian era Earth where you are leading a mining team to Mars. It's the artwork, flavor text, and background for this one that makes me think it's a good pick for Douglas Adams fans, as well as it being a very straightforward and easy to learn area majority game. Like to me, this is the gateway area majority game to teach that mechanic to a new player. Now, each player starts with the same set of crew members in card form and will play one of them each turn in order to load rockets, change rocket destinations, move miners between ships, sabotage other players, etc. Now, it's only the players with the most of their people in each sector of Mars that will get to mine the valuable resources they're in. So you can't play this with uh, one or two players at all? So... Technically, if you own the second edition of Mission Red Planet, which at this point is pretty much the only version you should be able to find, it introduced the two-player variant. Thing is, we tried it, and it works, but it's nothing like playing the regular game with more than two. It's one of those completely changes up the rules of the game. Each player is playing two different colors, a main color and a neutral color. The neutral color, you just randomly determine which card they're using, and they basically just mess with everyone's majorities. And then the worst part is at the end of the game, if either of the neutral colors has the most points, both players lose. So it's a two player game where you can both lose. I was just not a fan of it. And that was Mission Red Planet from Fantasy Flight Games. Have you ever wanted to know what it feels like to be the bridge crew of your own starship? Well, Space Cadets may be the game for you. Join Star Patrol and choose a role from Helmsman, Engineer, Weapons Officer, Shield Officer, Sensor Officer, or Captain. Each role will be playing their own unique mini-games as the Captain tries to direct everyone to complete your assigned mission. This game is silly, fun, and frantic. Uh, It's one of those games where everything's going wrong, and because of that, it's not going to be for everyone. Also, it's real time. So you have the captain yelling at you to fix the engine while the shield guy is asking you for more energy from the energy guy and the helm officer is trying to avoid an asteroid when they don't have enough power to get it done. And also, before you ask, no, this one doesn't even work with two players, sadly. It's best with at least five. That way, all the roles get covered and all the mini games are in play. And that was Space Cadets from Stronghold Games. My next silly sci-fi game suggestion is Clank in Space. Now, due to the fact the background and cards all parody a wide range of sci-fi tropes, all from the realms of science fiction, including Douglas Adams. Now, I wouldn't call this game laugh out loud funny, but there's definitely some humor to be found in the theming and the cards. Now, this is a deck building game where you're trying to sneak and board Lord Eradicus's spaceship. Snatch and grab some artifacts and get out via one of the escape pods. The problem is that it's far too easy to make a lot of noise while exploring, and that can draw the attention of the evil lord himself or his lackeys. Now, I actually love everything Clank, with this particular version featuring modular boards and some interesting mechanics to make sure players don't just sneak in, grab the first thing, and get out, which was a potential problem with the original Clank. Now, does this one work with only two space thieves? It does. Actually, most of my plays of Clank in Space were with only two players. Though I will say it's better with three. Excuse me. Though I will say it's better with three. I do prefer two over four, though, as the game can get long at the longest, highest player counts. And that was Clank in Space from Renegade Game Studios. Now, my final silly sci-fi game is all about factory management AIs getting really bored. So setting up races between the shop floor robots. That game is Robo Rally from Richard Garfield of Magic the Gathering fame. Actually, it was his money from Robo Rally that let him print his card game. Now, this is a ridiculous program movement game where you're trying to be the first to get your robot to hit all of the checkpoints while moving over a map covered with pits, lasers, conveyor belts, turning gears, crushers, flamethrowers, 
and a ton more obstacles. Now, there's a trick with this one, though. What you really want is the original version of the game, published by Avalon Hill, that came in a red box with metal robots, and not the much cheaper, much poorly produced uh, version released recently from Hasbro. Now, the Hasbro version is still fun. It's, it's solid, but it's simpler, I, which I guess is better for younger players and non-gamers, but it's just not as silly and over the top as the original and not nearly as much variability. Now, one more tip. You got to tell anyone who plays Robo Rally, especially if you find the original and the expansions, you got all these map tiles, keep most of them in the box. We strongly recommend you don't go nuts and use more than two maps. One or two boards, especially zigzagging back and forth, is actually the most fun, as the game can drag on if you have too many maps. You know what I want to know. All right, so this is a tough one. Most people would say you need at least three to enjoy Robo Rally, and in most cases, I agree. One of the problems with this game is that if someone gets too far ahead, especially if multiple maps, it can be hard to catch up. And that's actually one of the reasons when you're designing your checkpoints, you should zigzag so the robots have to cross each other, because that way everyone's kind of close enough to each other. But anyway, uh, with three or more players, when someone's in the lead, at least everyone else can kind of gang up on that player to try to catch them. Whereas when you're two players and someone's, it's a race, right? Someone's just so far ahead, you can get to that point where you can never catch up, or at least it feels that way. Now, that said, I have had some fantastic two-player games where the players are evenly skilled and it becomes a neck-and-neck -neck race and a frantic fight to the finish. So that one, that's a tough one. And that was Robo Rally, currently by Hasbro Games, but if you can, you want to find the Avalon Hill version. Now, this is a game I would love to see a new edition come out, hopefully bringing it closer back to the original game. Oh, I said I said final twice. I'm sorry. I have one more. <laughs> I have one more. Uh, my final recommendation, which I think is perfect for a couple looking for some sci-fi silliness. I did this in the last minute because uh, Deanna recommended it is the Mars Attacks the Miniature Game. This is a two player only skirmish miniature game from Mantic based on the Mars Attack franchise. And it includes all the silliness that goes with that. This includes overpowered everyman human heroes and things like flaming cows running across the battlefield. Yes, I own a set of flaming cow miniatures for this game. They come in the box. Now, the thing with this is that it's also a fantastic miniature game. Honestly, one of the best I've ever played. It uses the system Mantic created for Dead Zone, which is their most popular game. Now, it uses D6 dice and, or D8 dice instead of D6, so you've got a bit more variability. But the real shining point in this is a grid-based movement system and line of sight rules. It means you don't need any rulers or measuring tapes to play this while still staying a tactical skirmish game. Honestly, I love this game, but there's a huge problem. It's gone. It's long out of print. And I mean, like, really out of print. Like, if you go to Mantic's website and you click on products, it's not even listed there anymore, which is a shame. This is a game I wish more people had tried because I think they would have liked it. Even if they didn't care for the, the actual theming or the license, I think it was a fantastic miniature game that sadly I don't think got the chance it could have, it, it should have had. Now, since this is a two-player skirmish game, we know it's great for couples. Yes, exactly. So I guess the opposite question is, can you play with more than two? And as written, no, but the way the hero characters work, I could totally see playing with more people where each player is playing their own hero. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Or perhaps playing one versus many, where you have one player playing the Martians and then a group of players each controlling different heroes. And that was the sadly out of print Mars Attacks, the miniature game from Mantic. Next, we move on to some honorable mentions for you tonight. These are games that neither of us have had the pleasure of playing, but look like they could be perfect for Douglas Adams fans. So the first game is Space Team, the card game. Now, I love Space Team, the app. It's an Android app. I think it's also on Apple. If your game group has not played Space Team and you're into sci-fi stuff at all, before your next game night, you should all go download it and play a game before you break out whatever tabletop game you're going to play. It's really that fantastic. Now, the thing is, there's a Space Team card game. And when doing research for this topic, I found it on a lot of top sci-fi board game lists. So many that I figured I had to include it here. If this game has half the fast-paced, fun time of the app, it should be an amazing time in, in, in card game format. So as Sean noted, it is a party game. 
So best with groups of four or more. And that was Space Team from Stellar Factory. Next, I have Attack of the Jelly Monster. Now, this game builds itself as a chaotic tactical party game, which are four words you don't usually see together. Uh, it's a real-time simultaneous play dice game with the theme of defending your town that's being attacked by a giant jelly monster, and you need to rush around town and gather up as many samples as you can with your squad. Interestingly, despite that theme, this is not a cooperative game. Instead, you're all competing squads, each trying to be the team that can take credit for saving the town. Probably not the best way to defend your town from a jelly monster, but hey. Uh, now, I see this one on sale all the time, so you should be able to get this one cheap. And as for today's question, though, this one will won't work with two players. This is a minimum of three. But it could be some silly fun for a bigger group of Douglas Adams fans. And that was Attack of the Jelly Monster from Asmodee. Our final honorable mention is The Captain is Dead. While this one is clearly based on Star Trek, it lists Douglas Adams as an inspiration as well. In this game, you play the crew of a starship who in the last 10 minutes of the episode, the captain is killed off, and the remaining crew need to band together to save the day. This is a cooperative game for two to seven players that I have heard a ton of good things about. Heck, this was nominated for the 2018 Origin Award for Best Board Game of the Year. This is actually on my personal wish list and something I really want to try. It sounds like a lot of fun. As for playing two players, you may not want to do that. The box says two to seven, but the Board Game Geek users have listed this as a three to seven player game that's best with four or five. Now, the other thing I noticed on Board Game Geek that makes me want this even more is the weight. This is not like a weight one or two party game. This is like a 3.75, so even, I'm even more interested. I really want to check this game out. And that was The Captain is Dead from AEG. Now that's it for our list of silly sci-fi games that should be a treat for any Douglas Adams fans. What's your favorite silly sci-fi game? Did it make our list? If not, we'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question for us, head over to tabletopbellhop.com, click on Ask the Bellhop, fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or hit me up on social media, where I can be found everywhere as tabletopbellhop, one word. <laughs>